Let's pray. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit that as this scripture is read and proclaimed that we may be filled, filled to the max with you, Lord God, filled with the, with the power of the ages, filled, Lord God, with the salvation of our souls, filled, Lord God, with hope, with peace in your love. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord, for yet one more opportunity for us to try to get it right. Amen. Pretty familiar story here according to the Gospel of St. Luke. Conversation concerning two sisters. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, Martha. You are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part which will not be taken away from her. This has been an interesting text for the, me this week. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been fighting with God? Have you ever fought with God? Well, I've been fighting with God all week long. And it's, I'll have to say that. God always wins. So if you want to go that route, that's fine. But just know that God always wins. But God still makes us feel good along that direction as well. What this is about is not so much what we do, but why we do what we do. You see, Martha was a doer. She wanted to get things done. She may have been the type to clean a house two weeks prior before any company came, only to see after a week that the house was dirty again and had to do it all over again. But she wanted to make sure everything was just right because there's nothing better than being a good host and having everything just perfect. That's who Martha was. Martha was a doer. Nothing wrong with that. We need Marthas in the world, to be sure. But she was all about welcoming Jesus and probably a whole cast of folks into her home. And she was all about doing the tasks that were set before her. I envisioned that she had a list. And she stuck with it. She probably had post-it notes all over the place. She had her, her cell phone on. And, and I have a post-it note too. That's what my problem was with God all week. I said, God, what's wrong with post-it notes? I have a list for everything, you see. I have a list for what I'm going to be doing the next two weeks. I have a list for what's going to be doing tomorrow and next week. I have a list for Pastor Mar. We're going to talk about tomorrow morning. It's not a very long list, Mar. I promise you it shouldn't be too bad this week. But I have all these lists. And I thought, God, isn't that what you want us to do? Don't you want us to do your work? And God kept saying... You might want to rethink how you do things just a little bit. Martha was a doer. And Martha looked at a little sister, and the Bible doesn't say whether a little sister or not. I have a little brother, so I can say a little sister. A little sister wasn't doing anything. And so the big sister went to the little sister and said, you got to help me. you got all these dishes to do, all this stuff. Now the big guy comes, and, and Martha asks, Jesus, Jesus, you're the boss. You tell my little sister to help me. And, and that's when it happened. Martha. Martha. You know God is serious when God says your name more than once. Martha. Martha. You are distracted by your lists. You are distracted by what you're doing. And you forgot the most important thing in all the world. Mary has chosen the right way. 
Mary has chosen what is best. You see, God wants more than anything else in the world a relationship with us. God wants more than anything else in the world the opportunity to come to get to know you more than anything else in the world. Yet sometimes we become so preoccupied with our tasks. Sometimes we get so involved in what we are doing that we forget about our whys. In my conversation with the veterans here this morning, they did what they did. That is what you do. What you continue to do is witness for the Lord. But I also have to know why you do it. I mean, we are why you did what you did for the nation. But now you're out and you're proclaiming something even more profound. Because what you are doing and the whys are awfully important. The why is that God wants us each to witness this good news, this thing that cannot be taken away, this precious gift that is so important in everybody's lives that God is saying, get out. Get to know the people. Tell them about me. But first, come to know me a little bit. But so often we don't take the time to do that. I'll have to confess, I've had, this is only the second confession and the last one I promise because it's getting close to lunchtime. But I used to tell God, I said, God, I can get into a good relationship with you while I'm doing dishes. I can get into a good relationship with you while I'm cutting the grass. Somebody did tell me they can hear my preaching on the lawnmower. I thought the, I thought the motor would kind of drown that out, but that's not the case. Just FYI, if you have. I said, God, I can, I can get to know you a little bit driving around and talking to you, and I can, I can get to know you a little bit. But God kept saying, no, I want a little bit more. What's your name? Rick? I want to be your buddy. Rick? Or T-Bone? Chaplain T-Bone. Chaplain T-Bone Rick. No, I'm going to stop right, right there. Right there, I'm going to stop. Okay, so Rick, I want to be your friend, but I start walking away. That doesn't make any sense, does it? If I want to get to know Rick, if I really want to get to know why he is called T-Bone, or his calling that God has placed upon his soul to be a chaplain to this group, I have to talk to you, don't I? I have to get to know who you are. And you have to get to know who I am. In fact, you want to do that, and I want to do that. That's what a friendship is all about. But if we don't do that with God, guess what? We don't know God, do we? We don't know what God has uh, as planned for us. We don't know any of that stuff. So God is saying, step back from all your stuff, you Marthas of the world, and just talk to me and listen to me. All the other stuff will get done. Take it from a type A. You know, we still need our post-it notes because we forget everything. But why are we doing it? So God is saying, choose wisely. Understand why we do what we do. This world needs Jesus Christ even more than ever before. The world needs the church to be the church. And to be the church, we need to go out beyond this place and that same intimate relationship that we have with God, we need to share that with somebody else because they need that same relationship. Somebody said, well, how can we have an end to all this violence and all this insurrection and all this hatred and all this stuff? Well, maybe the people of God, if we stand up and we say, this is the way to live. This is what it's all about. That's what God wants. Take a look at the Bible. The Old Testament, a lot of folks don't like to read the Old Testament because it's violent. You know why it's violent? Because we're violent. 
God had the, God had the inner seed into our world. And that world is not often a very pretty place to be, but God catches us where we are, hoping upon hope that we will end up where God would like us to be. And through all throughout our salvation history, that is the case. And God never gave up on you, never gave up on me, never gave up on anybody. Once that relationship. And God wants us to live this life. Well, not just a life. According to John 10, 10, I want to give you life, Jesus says, in abundance. Well, life in abundance is all about knowing the joy, knowing the hope, knowing the affirmation, knowing that wherever you are, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is standing in the gap for us. That is the joy. That is living life in abundance. And we need to let people know that. We need to let people know that, that, that church is just not about uh, getting our all dressed up and ready to go. Church is not about just singing and all that. That's all pretty good stuff. But it goes so much deeper than that, so much more profound than that. See, Martha was kind of scratching the surface. Mary just stopped and sat at the feet of the master and let the master speak. Sometimes we do that through Bible study. Sometimes we do that through worship. Sometimes we do that just by sitting around with a cup of coffee and a, and a donut or, or a bowl of fruit, which would be a lot healthier. And we talk about things of God. And when the people of God start talking, you know what's interesting? I go down to my office down the street here to Panera's, and we start, we start talking there once in a while. And, 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 and you know what I'm seeing? Our, our ministerial group meets there on the second, second Wednesday of every month at 10 o'clock. I'm, I'm seeing people listen to us. People are listening. People are hungry. People want this word that, that, that became flesh and dwelled among us. People want that. People need that. They got to have it. They got to have it. Jesus won't give up on us either. One more story, then it's time for lunch, is that when Jesus was resurrected from the dead, he gathered, he came through a locked door, and he gathered with 11 disciples and said, Peace I, I leave with you, and breathed upon them the Holy Spirit. The only person wasn't there was Thomas. He was out playing golf because it was Sunday morning, and he wasn't there. Well, he came back, and, and the disciples told him uh, what had happened. He said, I don't believe that. Until I see the, the, the holes in his hand and in his side, I'm not going to believe that. But Jesus didn't even give up on Thomas. Came right back and said, Thomas... Here's the holes that you put in my hand. Put your finger through and in the side. Jesus wanted Thomas to be a, in relationship with him so much that he came back a second time, and I bet you he came back a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, however long it takes. So how do you do it? Just stop every once in a while. Take 10 minutes. And then it's going to end up with 15, 20. You ever talk with a good friend and you just keep talking? Just put down what you're doing for a little bit. If you have to stare at the wall, stare at the wall. Be in relationship with your Lord and your Savior. He, who wants more than anything else to have a relationship with you. Take the time. Just do it. Do the dishes too, but... but, but be with Jesus, the Christ. And when you do, you're going to be blessed beyond measure. You're going to know the why to the what. The why is always Jesus Christ. And the what? What we do is because we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And why we do it? So everybody can have that same relationship. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks. 
for the calling you've placed upon each of our lives, Lord God. We give you thanks, Lord, for, for, for kind of calling us to task every once in a while when we wrestle with you, that it seems like every day, Lord God, that you always seem to win, but you win for us, Lord God. Keep us in your stead. May we step back just a little bit from, our, from the haste of our day and, and, and our calendars that seem to be uh, always filled up and just have us take the time to be with you, Lord God. Uh, fill our hearts, fill our souls with that power in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know what I'm